Today we are going to tell you the story of a courtesan. When the courtesan went to Kaaba to perform Hajj, what punishment of Allah came upon her that the onlookers got goosebumps? To know this incident completely, join us. Rahiga Bismillah Rahman Rahim Mohtaram Nazreen, we will listen to this incident from the words of a doctor of the same area. Mohtaram Nazreen, there used to be a courtesan in some area who was very sinful. Every man living there used to give up his house to spend the night with her. That courtesan was not ordinary. She used to torture the girls a lot by kidnapping them, bringing them to her base, and forcing them to do this work. Then by the will of Allah, it happened that the courtesan fell ill once, and when her health got worse, she had to. Her 15-year-old son, who considered her his mother, immediately took her to the doctor. He was hesitant to talk to the doctor. He was afraid that if he told about the courtesan, the doctor might not treat her. But that doctor was very kind and understood everything, and told him that I am a doctor, and it is the duty of a doctor to see his patients equally. We doctors treat all the patients. There is no certificate to prove someone guilty or good. We can't give it to you. You are a patient. Try to understand that if she is a courtesan, then it doesn't matter to me. I will try my best to treat her. The doctor said that I could tell all these things about the 15-year-old boy standing in front of me. While he was talking, he started saying, Dr. Saheb, this woman is like my mother. I love her very much. If anything happens to her, I will be helpless in the whole world. I placed my hand on the boy's shoulder and said, You are worry-free. Okay, nothing will happen to the patient and he will be fine. You go home comfortably, and the boy thanked me and went home. This morning itself a 15-year-old woman was brought to the hospital. From some information I came to know that she was a wife and had become unconscious this morning. When she regained consciousness, she started vomiting blood. This boy, whose name was Ali, had brought this courtesan with him. He told me that this woman belongs to the same street as ours. Ali was a courtesan. His only fear was that when I found out that she was a disaster, I would not treat her. I encouraged her and assured her that I would do everything I could to save her life. I had got all the tests done on him, but it was revealed that he had cancer and he was in the last stage of his disease. It was impossible to save his life. I was sorry, but at the moment, there was nothing in my hand. I would check other patients. I was doing this when a nurse came to me and said, Dr. Sir, the health of that woman has deteriorated very much. Please come and take a look. I quickly got up and reached her vagina. She was in a lot of pain and she was vomiting blood again and again. I told him to get an injection. He got the injection done and her eyes started closing. I had nothing else in my hand. I wanted to give minimum trouble to my patient, so I gave her a relaxing injection. I had got it done. Now she was asleep. Naras had gone and I also started leaving. I stopped immediately after looking at her face. There was a special attraction in her face. I stood there and started looking at her face. Her eyes were closed, but her eyes were closed. From the structure of her face, it seemed that her eyes would be very big. Her features were very beautiful. Her face was like the moon and she was a beautiful woman. Many people would appreciate her. She would be at the peak of her career. But how did she know that this disease was destroying her from within and that she was on the verge of death? It had never happened in my personal life that a face or a person would settle in my mind like this. I would keep thinking about her even after going home, but there was no doubt that her personality was captivating. I kept thinking about her the whole night. When I reached the hospital, the first thing I thought about after seeing her was that I wanted to know whether she would be able to survive for a few days or not. I did not want to disturb her rest. I know that the life of a courtesan is very difficult. I wanted to spend the last moments of my life comfortably when I went to her ward. When I reached there, she was awake. She had a very sweet smile on her face. I said, you are looking fresh today. After listening to me, she laughed and said, I know how to fight difficult situations. I smiled and she also started saying something. Doctor, I am a common woman. Don't think that there is a big difference between a delicate woman brought up at home and a woman who lives in a brothel. Women who are ready from one place and ready for another customer have a lot of courage and courage. I shook my head and she said, you tell me about my illness. I will not lose courage at all. I will not sit down crying. I have some unfinished business left, which I want to do before I die. I do not want to die an unaware death. I want to die after finishing my work. Everything she said was true. 
Her eyes were testifying. I said, you have cancer, and you are in the last stage of cancer. Hearing me, a smile spread on her lips which means that she was true to her promise. She said, how many days do I have? I said that life and death are in the hands of Allah Ta'ala. Sometimes it happens that the patient leaves death and comes back, and a strong person dies while sitting, and the reports are saying that you have very few days. But at the moment, everything is known to Allah Ta'ala. She smiled and said, Dr. Sahib, Thank you very much, you did not hide anything from me. I want to go on Hajj before I die. You told me everything truthfully, so I will go on Hajj and pray for you too. I smiled and came back to my room. I was surprised at her courage. I had also seen people who started crying bitterly after hearing about death. I had also seen such people who remained silent for many days. They keep fighting with death, and their lives keep getting stuck but they are so engrossed in the worries of the world that they do not allow their soul to be bothered by their body. In such a situation, they feel a lot of pain. They very quickly accept their death. She was undergoing treatment. After a few days, a man came to meet her. Coincidentally, at the same time, I was doing her checkup. Doctor, I have now developed courage and I'm just ready to go. Now I don't feel like sitting still for too long. I don't even get tired. Now I can even walk for 10 minutes. I feel like I'm getting better. A smile spread innocently on her face. Once I went there, I was surprised to see her face. She had a very sweet smile. I said that you would be treated for a few more days and then you could go for Hajj. The cat went to Hajj after eating 100 rats. Doctor, this is a courtesan. She has committed big crimes in her life. She is a very bad woman. She thinks that by doing Hajj, she will get her sins forgiven and after death, she will go straight to heaven. You tell her that her whole life, those who commit crimes do not become public by going on Hajj. The man standing near me started laughing. There was deceit in his smile. I found that man's words very strange. I said, Who are you? Don't answer. I said, I can't understand your work. Can you understand God's work? You and I, who are the ones to divide hell and heaven? Leave the decision of all these to God only. He shrugged his shoulders and said, Okay. The doctor's words hung in the air challenging the man's perspective and urging a deeper understanding of divine judgment. It's okay, I don't say anything, but remember my point. If the courtesan starts going to heaven, then what will happen to that woman? The woman who worshipped all her life, kept following all the orders of Allah, kept living her life and never complained to God. Doctor, invest as much money as you need. We want it to be fine. She is the owner of our brothel. If anything happens to her, we will suffer a huge loss. Saying this, the man went away from there while the doctor stood there, feeling a complex mix of emotions. He was in love with that woman. He wanted to know the inside story. Although he was a very busy doctor, he used to spend his bad days hopping from one case to another. There was a strange attraction in that courtesan. He wanted to know about her. So despite the checkup, he was standing there. After the man left, she started crying bitterly. I got scared and said, what happened? Why are you crying? I will not go to heaven. I will not get forgiveness. Why are you saying all this? If he feels that my sins will not be forgiven, then he is right. He is a man, isn't he? Don't lose your heart after listening to me. I smiled and said, this is nothing to cry about. No human being can decide heaven or hell. The doctor's words offered a glimmer of hope, but the courtesan's despair was palpable. She became silent and said that these people consider me a very sinful person. And that is why they do not want me to go for Hajj. You make arrangements for my going. Please understand that you are fulfilling the last wish of a dying woman. I nodded yes, and I said, I would do whatever was required of me. Saying this, I came to my office and looked at the big ticket in my drawer. I also had to go for Hajj after a few days, and in such a situation, I had to meet that woman. This request had to be fulfilled. If I had not done so, her request would have been cancelled. Then I was afraid that if I rejected her request, then Allah Almighty might not approve of my Hajj. I wanted to take that woman on Hajj. The doctor was determined, understanding the gravity of the courtesan's plea and the spiritual significance it held for both of them. I reported her. I saw that her condition was getting worse day by day. She had very few days left. Whatever I had to do, I had to do it quickly. I had decided to take the 15-year-old boy along with me to take care of the courtesan. It took me 10 days to do all the work that I was calling her like my mother. Now they had started getting lighter under her eyes. She had become very weak. I said that your condition is getting worse. I will take you on Hajj. 
How will I take her, she said, if I don't go for Hajj for ten years? I will keep wandering like this, and will remain lying on the bed. I will never die. It seemed to me that the way she was yearning for death when she went for Hajj, she will also step back. I was very scared of her words. I thought in my heart that what a good woman she is. Those who say no to her must be bad themselves when she is doing everything to reach the level of God in her heart. There was so much agony that I had called the doctor's team to my office. I had told them that this was the wish of this woman. We should fulfill it. Instead of treating her by keeping her in the hospital, it is better to take her on Hajj and her last wish should be fulfilled. The doctor accepted my decision. I completed the necessary action. When I told this news to the courtesan, she started crying uncontrollably and said, Allah has accepted my presence. Allah has accepted my presence. I looked at her and thought, she is a very mature woman. People who are wrong about this are wrong themselves. After a few days, it was time for us to leave. I took her and the boy and we set off for the journey. We set out on this journey. It was a very religious journey. She and the boy were chanting the praises of God. The name of Allah was on their tongues. The woman thought that I had committed many sins. Perhaps God should forgive me. I nodded yes. So the duty of that courtesan seemed very clear. This is the sign of forgiveness that a person starts realizing his sins. By the grace of Allah, our journey was completed and we reached Saudi Arabia. When I first laid eyes on the Kaaba, I shuddered. Take me to the hotel. I am not feeling well. She held my hand and said, take me back. She got scared. The night passed when her condition started getting strange. I was not expecting that at all, I said. What happened to you? I am feeling fine, Dot. She said, yes, I am feeling fine, but I am scared. Take me away from here, otherwise I will stop breathing. I took care of my patient, left him in the room at the hotel and came out. My marriage is next month. I had gone there and prayed a lot for my happy life. There was such beauty there that I did not feel like coming back, but it was a compulsion. It was night time. I came back to the hotel. When the morning came, I thought that I would take her to perform ziyarat. Then she came to me and said, take me along with you. I said, yes, come. I will make you perform ziyarat too. As soon as Kana was about to reach Kaaba, she closed her eyes and said to Ali, my hold me by the hand and take me to Kana Kaaba. I wanted to see his attitude. I wanted to look at him. When the biggest wish of a person's life is fulfilled, how does he express his happiness? He held the courtesan's hand and took her to Kana Kaaba made him stand right in front of him and said, Now open your eyes. As soon as Kana reached near the Kaaba, he said, Open your eyes. She happily opened her eyes, and after seeing the Kana Kaaba, the complexion of her face changed and she started screaming back. She was running. She wanted to run away from here. She was running like crazy. She was not worried about her scarf. Her scarf had fallen off. Everyone was paying attention to her. People were looking at her. They were paying attention to her. Now here in front of everyone. It was about to become a drama. So I came forward and held her hand and asked her to walk. But if she had been conscious, she would have listened to me. She shook my hand. She was screaming. Everyone was gathering around her. She had a shocked expression on her face. I went into the room and asked her what had happened to her. She said that my eyes were open in the brothel. My mother was a courtesan. She had committed sins all her life but when she grew old she realized that she wanted a child. My mother was thinking that someone should be my own who can help me in my pain and suffering. My mother got pregnant, she did not abort me and just like that, another wife was born in the brothel. When Amma came to know that a daughter had been born in my house, she became very happy and said that the support of my old age had come into this world. Amma had taught me all kinds of skills in my childhood. She had taught me how to control the hearts of men. How do we live? Take more money than anyone else. I was becoming a master in everything. No one ever told me that whatever was happening was a crime or something wrong. I saw the entire environment around me like this. When I, I became young, all the women of Amma's age had grown old. Everyone had a lot of trust in me. They made me the owner of the brothel. There was no fear of any kind in me. Money was my only motive. I used to kiss money, but when all the brothels became old, our conditions were not good and no one even liked to come towards us. Now we felt that we would die of hunger. So I told the men working in all the brothels that I need new girls somewhere. Go and give me new girls as soon as possible. I want this room to be full of girls as soon as possible. My men were in full swing. They were bringing the girls to me. Out of all the girls who came to my room, there were only two who were like that. She had come of her own free will and of her own free will. All the rest were either kidnapped or bought. All the new girls who used to come to my brothel used to cry a lot. 
They used to fold their hands in front of me, kept apologizing to me, used to give in to me. But I, I didn't listen to anyone. I used to do whatever came in my heart. I realized that the more decent the girls were, the higher their rates were. I had slept with many policemen, so I had no fear of arrest. Told my men to bring more girls. When it was raining heavily, two of my men brought a 15-year-old girl in front of me and kept her. They risked their lives and brought her. We all have picked up that girl and brought her back now. You take care of it. That girl had understood that something wrong was going to happen to her. She was very scared. I asked, What is your name? She said, My name is Fatima. I am the daughter of Malvi Bashir. You allow me to leave from here. Please give me. If Para does not go home at night, then my father will be defamed. Many people will spit on him. And everyone will say that the Malvi teaches a good lesson to the people, but his own daughter has run away from home. No one will know that. I have been picked up from home. I kept laughing after hearing this and said I can see the pity in your eyes. I know that with you, I will earn a lot of money and you will be useful to me. She said, take some care of my name. I. She said, from today onwards, I will change your name to Lal. She started crying. She said that you have respect for God. There is pride in my eyes because I have spent my whole life in worship. I am the daughter of a noble father. My father spent his whole life like this. So how can I die at such a place? She was laughing after listening to his words. Then she slapped him on his face and said, Do you think that I will let you go from here? Don't even think that I am far away from all of them? That girl kept crying, but I had earned a lot of money from that girl. She kept working for me for two years. Finally, one day she became ill. When I went to her, her eyes were lifeless. She said with crying eyes, How will I go in front of my Allah? How will I show my face to Allah? Allah's name was on my tongue all the time. Ever since I came here, I have lost everything. I have forgotten everything among the sinful women. That Layla had lost her life after her departure. I thought what kind of a person would she be? There is a celebrity with whom Layla is crazy in love. I started knowing about Allah. I fell in love with him. I decided to give up evil. But then I thought that if I left all this, then how would I live a life of luxury? Then I got this result. But I decided that in my old age, I would leave all this and walk on the path of goodness, do good deeds to people, and give up my sins. I have heard that whenever I ask for forgiveness from Allah, He forgives. So I thought that at the time of my death, I would get all my sins forgiven by doing Hajj. Doctor, do you understand my plan? I wanted to deceive Allah on my part, whereas the reality is that I have deceived myself and humiliated myself in my old age. I could not reach there and the disease took me in its arms. When I came to know that the time of my death was near, I thought why not perform Hajj and seek forgiveness for my sins? The man who had come to meet me in the hospital asked you. He said it right. I am a very sinful woman. He knew every moment of my life very well. He was telling the truth that I am a very sinful woman. I consoled him and said, everything will be fine, but you tell me why I am crying. Dear doctor, I used to cry. I had come here with the hope that all my sins would be forgiven. I would seek forgiveness from Allah and become eligible for heaven. But do you know what happened to me when everyone was crying their hearts out while standing in front of the Kaaba? They were making light. They were expressing their love. I couldn't see anything there. I asked the woman standing in front of me, where is Khana Kaaba? Then she said, it is right in front of you. I could see everything only Khana Kaaba. Do you know the meaning of the fact that I was not visible? I had set out for Hajj in my quest for heaven and hell. Allah is very angry with me. He is angry with me. I see only Layla everywhere. She was smiling only at him. As voice was heard, she was saying that there is a lot of difference between those who choose a life of crime and those who are forced to commit crime. I have found my love. You tell me what you got. She was crying in agony. She raised her hand in front of the doctor. She kept it and said, Look, doctor, my hands are empty. I did not find anything. Her condition was getting worse. An ambulance was quickly called and she was taken to the hospital. It was found that she was dead. Everyone was worried. The doctor was very scared of her condition. It seemed that he said what would happen to him after his death. He was wondering what would happen to him after his death. He went to the office of the people living there to get permission to perform his funeral, but he was also rejected. He was surprised as to what was happening. He was returned home and he was handed over to them at his brothel. He came home and five years have passed since then. The doctor said that whenever I offer namaz, I pray for him. May his soul rest in peace. Please do so. And my appeal to all of you is that you all should also pray for him. I don't know what would have happened to him 
as he had instilled the fear of Allah within himself at the time of his death, will his soul be spared or will he be given severe punishment? Milagi astaghfirullah, I pray to Allah Pak that Allah Pak may forgive all our sins, call us on Hajj and grant us the ability to perform Hajj. Ameen. Share this video with others. One of your couplets may touch someone's heart. Go and give Sadaka Jariyagide to all of us. Settings.